My name is Erasmo, Eddie Malacara, founder of Eddie Aviation Videos. Welcome, my friends, to another video of Eri Aviation Videos. My name is Erasmo Eri Malacara, and I'm a flight instructor here on the airport of Edinburgh, Texas. Today, I have the opportunity to be here with my good friend, Don Crow. And Don is the owner of this beautiful plane, which we're going to have the opportunity today to fly and learn more about this beautiful machine. Uh, Don, can you explain our friends, because I remember you finished your private power license using a Cessna 172. That's correct. And then you bought this plane and learned to fly this plane. Can you tell our friends what's the main difference between a tricycle landing gear plane versus a tailwheel plane? How, how you will measure, how you will explain the difference between both? Well, the difference between a, a tricycle gear is basically in the landing and takeoff and in the taxiing to some degree. Uh, this plane actually taxis pretty easily for a, for a uh, tailwheel aircraft, but in the landings and taking off, the planes, once they get in the air, they basically fly the same. But the uh, takeoff and landings, especially the landings, is very difficult because the, it requires a, a lot more rudder control. You have to stay a lot more coordinated in, in the approach where the ball is centered, and you have to have the correct attitude, which is a nose high attitude with a three-point a three point landing. The tail wheel and the nose, uh, the, the main gears touch at the same point on the runway so that uh, you don't get a bounce or you don't hit one and hit the other. It causes a porpoising or a bounce. That's correct and that's one of the hardest things to do on this uh, baby over here behind me. Now, uh, tell us about the kind of plane. What, what kind of plane is this, Don? It's an Acrosport II. It's an experimental plane. It was built in uh, 1979. It has a, uh, a Lycoming IO360. Uh, it's uh, two place. The pilot sits in the front and the passenger sits in the, or the pilot sits in the rear and the passenger sits in the front uh, hole. It, uh, it's stressed for eight positive and six negative Gs. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's basically a, it's not a cross-country plane. It has a range of about 275 miles, 25 gallon uh, fuel tank, and it burns approximately 10 gallons an hour. Now, is this fully acrobatic? Yes, it's, fully, acro all? it's fully acrobatic. Uh, to do acrobatics, you have to wear a chute, but the, uh, a parachute, but the, the plane is, is stressed for eight positive Gs and six negative. Awesome. Now, Don, can you please explain us about the maintenance? Since it's an experimental plane, what kind of maintenance do you need to give versus the conventional 172? Well, as far as if you're the builder of an experimental aircraft, then you're the mechanic. You're the A&P in charge of that airplane. If, uh, if I purchased this from, it was already pre-built, so the, the basic maintenance, the oil changes, tire, the m basic maintenance stuff, uh, lubrication system, I can do myself. But the, when it comes to the uh, engine, uh, airframe, I rely on an A&P mechanic uh, who really knows his business to do that because uh, my safety is important to me. That's great. That's a great information. I also did my transition from a tricycle landing gear to a tailwheel plane, and I remember it was very tricky. It was very, very hard. I found that as a tricycle landing gear air, uh, pilot, I really don't understood the wind on the ground, mm -hmm. uh, or the effect of the wind on the ground. It was still I came to the, <laughs> to a tailwind plane where I really understood the effect. And the plane is just very, by nature, is very unstable on the ground. And then we can use a lot of working on the rulers, on the pedals. We call dancing on the pedals. And uh, that's why they make it hard. And I remember, Don, that you, you told me a sample. Can you tell that to, to our friends? Well, a, a tailwheel aircraft, it's similar to if, if a child's uh, tricycle, uh, it was trying to push the two wheels, the small wheels in front of the big wheel in front, and you're pushing it from, from behind, uh, the, or pushing it backwards. And if you're trying to push it backwards, it does not want to go. It's not as easy to maneuver. And that's basically what we're doing with this aircraft. The little wheel in, in the back is always wanting to go to the front, and that's what you have the, that's the main job of a pilot with a, with a tailwheel aircraft is to keep the, the tailwheel behind the plane at all times. That's correct, and that's very tricky. It sounds very easy, but it's really tricky. You can also can perform this kind of test on the supermarket. Next time that you go to the supermarket, grab the little car and push it forward, and you will, you will see it will stay there. If you push it the correct way, it will stay straight there. That's a tricycle landing gear plane. 
Now, if you switch it backwards and push it, then you will see the, the little car is going to go everywhere. That's the tailwheel plane. So you can perform those kind of things, and you will see today how we're going to be working with the pedals on this baby. Here's <laughs> our friends from the helicopters. Uh, and now Don is going to give us a little tour around the plane, uh, teaching us about the items that he needs to inspect on this beautiful plane. Yes, uh, I'm here to perform a pre-flight inspection, what I do every time before I fly. Uh, safety is most important to me. Uh, I want to be a, a really old pilot, and uh, I check my plane every flight before I fly for the following items. I generally start right here on the right wing tip. I check the light, the, the navigation lights, make sure they're right. I walk around to check the leading edges. I check the flying wires, the flying wires to make sure that they're tight, that there's nothing loose and nothing has happened to the flying wires, that the connections are good. I look at the top wing. I get over here. I check the tire, check the tire pressure, make sure that the tires look inflated. Uh, the bungee cords are right there. Make sure I just had those uh, replaced so the bungee cords are good. I opened up the cowling here and the cowling in this airplane, I basically check two things. I check the oil, the oil uh, level, and make sure that the oil is has a sufficient level, and put that back in. And then I check the fuel, make sure that the fuel is not contaminated. And that's down here, the little strainer down here. And I check a little sample of fuel. I've already done that once this morning. So. I check the fuel, make sure the fuel has no contamination in it, make sure it's clean and it's the proper grade. It's 100 low lead aviation fuel. I come around, I check the prop, make sure that the prop has no nicks in it. It's a wooden prop, so I really check it good, make sure there's no cracks, nothing, uh, contaminants, bugs. Check both sides, check the leading edge of the prop, make sure it's good. I also look into the uh, cooling fins of the cylinders to make sure that there's no bugs or uh, uh, birds or anything that's flown into there. Make sure everything's clean so that the uh, air can cool the engine well. I come down the other side to the left side of the plane. Again, checking tires, checking this, checking the flying wires, making sure the flying wires are tight. The flying wires are tight. This stick right here is to keep the flying wires from vibrating, from bouncing, so it keeps everything together. Make sure that that's good. And Don, what's that the little thing there on the, on the bottom of the, on the belly of the plane? Right there, those black uh, look like bags. These bags right here, yeah. this is the they are bungee cords. This is the shock absorber system for the landing gear. Uh, there's big rubber bands that are about the size of a, a large rope, about one diameter, one inch in diameter, and they uh, these bags protect those bands from uh, being uh, contaminated with any oil or dirt. And I checked those, make sure those were just replaced in my last annual, which was about two or three weeks ago, so I know they're good. I come around and check again the leading edge, the, the uh, navigation lights on the left side of the plane, making sure it's all there. Check, also check, look at the ailerons. I move the ailerons. This has upper and lower ailerons on both wings, so I make sure that they all feel nice and tight, everything's good. I then come over, We'll make sure the screws, everything's good. Check the cockpit, make sure there's nothing in the cockpit. I check the front hole, I make sure that the, there's nothing, no obstructions, there's nothing loose inside. The stick is good, the stick is free to move, everything's good there. Uh, that the, every, All the connections, I check everything in here just to see that there's any, any issues or anything abnormal. In the rear hole, I look again, make sure all the switches are off, make sure everything's in there, the stick's free, that the, uh, I just check it, make sure that there's nothing unusual with the airplane. In the front hole or the back hole, check the side of the plane, come back. I come back to the tail section, checking, making sure that the leading edge of the tail is good. Check the flying wires. There's flying wires here on the back, on the top and bottom, that they're connected, that they're secure, there's nothing uh, loose. I check for uh, the travel of the elevator, make sure it's tight, not loose, and also the tail wheel springs are good the rudder this has a, a braking tail wheel so you can actually uh, turn the tail wheel uh, sideways when you're parking it makes it very easy going through the other side again checking making sure everything's tight making sure all the uh, flying wires are good on both sides and then come around to the other side of the plane checking the uh, wings and again, checking the ailerons, making sure that everything is tight, there's no play, everything feels the way it should. And I'm back to where I started from, and that's the end of my, my inspection, my pre-flight inspection. So as you see, my friends, now we're ready to go and fly and uh, have fun with this little baby. So you will be having the opportunity to look from the cockpit 
straight down and inside the plane. So now Don is going to teach us how to get inside the cockpit. 